I'm Jessica, I'm the mum. Hi, I'm Gideon, I'm the dad. Hi, I'm Mordecai and I am the biological son. This here is Ruben, he is uh, twin number two. Um, and this is Levi, he's twin number one. And we had the privilege of adopting them, or rather um, getting them, uh, at the beginning of this year in March. And we got them from an amazing baby haven in Port Elizabeth. But they had looked after these boys from the age, well, from when they were born really, until they were four months old when we were able to um, have them. Children in this country are not allowed to go to adoptive parents until the parents no longer have any legal right to change their mind, and that's up to 90 days. So um, any baby in South Africa that is um, either given up for adoption or abandoned, um, the government or the social services have to go through a process up to 90 days um, of either finding parents or waiting for a period of time to elapse before they can be given to a prospective family. So the a few years ago we met a couple and a few people around them that were planning on starting a farm type place with different foster homes to look after abandoned children and possibly foster homes and we got really excited about this but it never came to be. Sometime after that we found the farm that we've bought which was just a bizarre experience and we've ended up buying this farm that had two houses um, quite a bit of land right by the side of a main highway and as a joke we said to each other hey we could do what we'd originally planned with these other people um, and everyone laughed and said no and we bought the farm anyway and then of course God intervened and told this amazing friend that we met through these people that it was time to start a kangaroo home. And it coincided with our then tenant deciding to leave the farm. And she said yes, and here we are today. As a joke, a few weeks ago, I said to somebody, whenever I decide to try a new hobby, I just go a little bit overboard. So if I wanted to learn to cross stitch, then I would buy lots of cross stitch kits. Or if I was gonna learn to do um, painting, I would just buy all of the stuff that I would need and then just do one painting. And so I joked with this lady and said, I decided I wanted to garden, so I bought a farm. The silly thing is, is that I really don't know anything about gardening or growing things or anything of that type. So we've ended up with this a four hectare farm, uh, one hectare of which is usable as a field. And in it, we're growing things like watermelon and pumpkin and spinach and tomatoes and peppers and basically growing anything I want to eat. So the idea was to grow things that we would want to consume. So we're saving money on food bills, be a bit more self-sustainable, um, eat more fresh things. And um, when Chris decided that she was going to obey God and move to the farm, it just um, made me feel really good that we would be able to share that produce and share the experience of being on a farm and to share the income that we might get from that with children who need have nothing. Having taken um, custody of our twin boys, Reuben and Levi, in March, um, we came to realise that there was a much bigger need than we had even thought of before. Our boys had been completely loved and had been nurtured and had been given care and it has meant that having gotten them at four months old, they were already loved they were already um, feeling secure and safe and it wasn't so disruptive or traumatic to move to a forever family. That's not the case for all babies in South Africa and a great deal of them die. Our boys, much like many other abandoned children in this country, would have been born into abject poverty. Their mom, their birth mom, um, already had four children, was living in a shack with her aunt who was the only person working. Um, and living in that shack and that is where my boys would have been if she hadn't loved them enough to be able to let them go to somebody who could look after them better. The poverty in this country is extraordinary and there are so many children that are born into this poverty and born into these shacks and running around on the street and not cared for and not looked after and there are many babies that are just left, they're not even taken to a haven, they're not even left in a hospital. They can be found in rubbish dumps and behind toilets and so many babies are dead before they even get found. And that's just appalling and we want to do everything we can to stop babies from dying unnecessarily.
because there are homes out there that would love to have them and parents out there who would love to have them. In order to help as many babies as possible not die being left in that situation, we've opened up the second home on our property to be Abba's house, to make it available for those children. Part of the vision of being on the farm is the ability to be self-sustaining. And a part of that is um, both electricity and water. We're already fairly self-sufficient on water because we use rainwater, we catch it into um, big Jojo tanks. We very rarely need to use municipal water. We're wanting to get more Jojo tanks so that's even less um, of a complication down the line. At the moment, the water that we use is pretty on par with what families are expected to use given that we're in a drought area. That is going to become more strict and more difficult to adhere to when we are using water for cleaning and washing babies, when we're using water to clean and wash their clothes, and of course we're feeding them with formula and cooking. So we're going to have to increase our water storage capacity by way of Jojo tanks. Um, we have plenty of roof space to catch it, we just don't have plenty of storage at the moment. We also want to be self-sustaining with regards to electricity. We already moved over to gas geysers to boil our water for showering and, and so on. Given the inconsistency of the availability of electricity, even though we pay so much for its availability, um, we are never confident of having that. What we need to do is to move over to solar power. In South Africa, we have this thing called load shedding, where we have rolling um, planned blackouts which can be anything from one time a day to four times a day and upwards and it's for two and a half hours a block. This means that we don't have electricity and that means that doing things like um, boiling water for sterilized water for making baby bottles or um, sterilizing the bottles in the microwave or even doing washing for the baby's clothes is just not possible. Another thing we need to consider is um, medication for the babies um, that needs to stay in the fridge. Our baby's um, tummy mummy was HIV positive and had they not had the correct medication with exactly the right intervals, they would not be HIV negative as they are now. So they have, they have a future, a bright future with no illness because they got the medication they needed at the right times and that medication needs to be cared for in the right way. We need electricity to be able to do that and we need it to be consistent and confident that it's going to be there. Availability of solar power solutions is vast in South Africa for those that can afford it. We're already in a really fantastic position in terms of providing produce which is great because it'll be in season and fresh and healthy we have plans to open a farm stall so that any excess that we have we can sell and part of that profit is going to go back into helping the children on the farm. We already are moving towards as much sustainability as possible but we need help to be able to go solar. Um, and so what we'd really like and, and really hope for is that if people are willing to help us help these children that will go a long way to being able to make us more self-sustaining, less dependent on erratic and difficult to manage infrastructure, um, and just an ability to be confident that when we take a child into our care, that we're gonna be able to meet their needs at any given point. It feels really um, scary and cheeky to put such a high amount on a GoFundMe target. The reason I've made it that much is because that is how much it would cost to go completely off grid. Anything more than what is needed for solar, we will use to be more self-sustaining in terms of water and um, crops and so on. Together we want to be a part of the solution. Won't you help us and join us as we do that?